Well, it is a lovely day on the Thames, isn't it? On the Thames, you silly ass. What are you doing with that on? Well, it got rather hot. You know, living in the frozen north, one has to protect one's, uh, one's head, and it was so hot by the day. But it's in a lovely area. It's, it's marvellous. It's wonderful. But we are fishing. We're supposed to be fishing. Well, it's clear blue water and the weeping willows and the boats. It's absolutely fantastic. I have never caught anything in my life. Are you a fisherman, Yes, Eddie? Yes, I used to fish from so Billington so Pier, as a matter of fact. Get away. I did, I did a bit of... You can get pike in here, you know. Hey, up. Hey, hey, up. I've got a bite. I've got a bite. It's it's Oh, Thank look you, at it. It's an old boot. Ecky thump, I thought I'd got a... I've got a pike. Anyway, look out. We've got a crew here from Henley-on-Thames. Ecky thump, it's time for round two of It's a Knockout, 1979! <laughs> Welcome to the riverside at this beautiful town of Hadley on Thames. You've seen the atmosphere, it's colourful, the sun is shining, and here we are on game one. Well, it is, isn't it? Yes, and it features those wonderful creatures you'll know and love. The conks in the middle here, we've got one from Rushmore, and on the end from Henley, and here from Didcot. Plenty of support! The lovely Maria Scott is with us all the way from Mosley and the ever-bountiful Sir Arthur Ellis. And the game is that the conks go through the contraption here, they go through the barriers there that look like the level crossing gates they have in France. At the far end are three damsels smiling as they go, with three measuring cylinders. Whatever water is left in the buckets is tipped into there. The measuring job, game one underway, let it unfold, Arthur. Ready? Three, two, one. <whistles> and off they go. Didcot. There is the crowd. In the middle, Rushmore, on the end is Henley. <laughs> up, up goes the barrier. They all barge through, two conks of each team. And a battle for first place. Rushmore did con... <laughs> but how much water remains in the bucket? Listen to the, listen to the cheers. A lot of excitement, a lot of support here for Henley. It goes in. Who's got the most? It could be... It could be Henley in the lead. They go back. Back whence they came. <laughs> Look at that. What a, what a riot of colour. On this beautiful day, the winter, long past and long forgotten. Henley in the lead. Rushmore second, and the second con takes over. Listen, listen to the cheers now. Did cut in a slap, did cut a leading slight bit. First to the barrier, did cut. <laughs> he conks it up, but Henley will come through on the same lift. And Henley will follow him through tactics here. That's Didcot wrestling through, that's a lovely pretty face. Didcot and Henley. Henley are just very casually waiting for Didcot to do all the work. <laughs> oh, he's waited too long. Oh, tactics. It won't go up for Didcot, it's gone up for Henley. Come in. <laughs> Two more for Didcot. Here come Henley and the Henley supporters have gone quiet. <laughs> so Rushmore are coming out, a little jostling going on. A little bit of jostle here between Henley... No, it's after you, Claude. Make way, Cecil. It's a three-minute game. Each team already has two. Henley in the lead, still 30 seconds to go, you'll have to hurry now. <laughs> oh, yes. And the sun comes bursting out. Didcup, you have 20 seconds to make this run. Is it going to be 
fouled by Rushmore. No. Come on, Midkiff. Running out of time. This could be vital. No, the whistle goes. The whistle goes, and up comes the comp. I don't think he's heard us, but uh, whilst you're... Uh, would you like a drink? Just pop your little... You've got to feed the conks, and it comes out at the bottom somewhere, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, dearie me. <laughs> well, you're taking it at one end, you know. Anyway, Arthur, meanwhile, have you uh, adjudicated? The conks are down. Step forward and... And uh, the score for Rushmore, 11 marks on the dipstick. For Deep Cot, 14 marks on the dipstick. And listen, Enley on Thames, 14.5 marks oh. on the dipstick. So, three points to Enley. Before we put them up, on our scoreboard there, a riot of colour is Helena Hunt waving her right arm in the air. Wonderful. Did you get that? It's Henley three points, Helena. Prick them up. Two points to Ditkut. Two points to Ditkut. One point to Rushmore. One point to Rushmore, and for the first round of the marathon, it's Uncle Eddie. Well, thank you very much, Stuart. Do you know the game, the marathon? Well, I'm not really sure. You're not really sure? Well, you watch me. Well, you've got to dribble this ball. I'm not going to do that to begin with. Don't throw it away. Dribble it. And you see some lads on the side trying to knock me over. They'll really have a go when the competitors come. And there's the goalie. Great big feet, trying to stop them getting in. So uh, that's the game. And Mike and Debbie. Debbie to count and Mike to judge. And so it's uh, got to a team ready. Right, Ditcott, you're going with them. Right, Ditcott to go for the first of the six marathons. Are you ready? Mike, the whistle. Oh, that was the funniest whistle I've ever seen. Metcalf, Terry Bradshaw is down, and Wally Pryor, and the girl Joe Marapi Joe. And we've got uh, the whistle very shortly. The bashy that put it through, they'll be going eventually to replace. Rushmore, Dick Cott in the green at his colour, and the yellow for Rushmore. Barry Metcalf doing quite a good job. Any idea how many we've got? I don't know. It's very difficult to tell from the position and this stage where the whistle goes. Well, that was uh, a rather tiring first game. Because uh, this fellow's nearly done with it. Anyway, how many? Ditcott scored three. Ditcott scored three. So that's par for the course. The first one, three to Ditcott and to Stewart. Well, thank you, Eddie. And with me, I've got some lovely faces here from Henley on Thames. And they're going to cheer Moira Stevenson, aren't we? Yes? There we are. Because... She is going to be balancing on a little bit of a drum, but over here we've got Viv Reese Davis from Didcot. And the battle is joined because the two girls are jockeys on the drums rolled by their teammates. Here's the start line. There's a line at the far end of the course. They cross it and return. A race to the death between Henley and Didcot. Arthur. Ready? Three, two, one. Now uh, let's hear the cheers going. They've got to stay on as best they can. The two jockeys up to the far end. If they fall off, they have to remount. 
The drum can't roll until the girls are safely on the top and listen to the cheers. Henley in the lead, in the red. Myra Stevens, well known, everybody's cheering for her. A teacher of physical education. Malcolm and Roger are like a pender up the course and in the lead. That's the distance, it's about half a yard. As they come to the halfway stage and crossing the line, there it is, will be first. Henley! On the way back. The second leg. Where are the cheers for Didcot? Where are the Didcot cheers? Because in the green now, they've had a slight lead. Arthur sent them back. Henley apparently hadn't crossed the line cleanly. But overhauling them now, on the ropes is Henley! That's Gidget in the stripes. That's Viv Rees-Davis, a young police cadet. And a lot of intelligence there because we're telling her, those two big huskies in these striped shirts, Bruce Charles and Duncan Talbot. Bruce is a tax consultant. A civil servant is Duncan and Henry up, overhauling them. It's absolutely neck and neck. Nothing in it. Nothing, nothing to show. Gidget. Didcot, now Henley coming again. Henley coming on the ropes. It's a test of nerve. It's third now. Who's going over first? Who's in first? No. Both teams back. Both teams have got to go back. It wasn't clean. They mount. Henley are in first. Henley are the first. It's over the line first. And it's... It's... Well, who's won? Who won that one then, the audience? Oh. Well, yes, Arthur. Yes, we've heard, that Let... all be we've heard that all before, but neither side completed. Both got to get back on a few inches from the line. The winners were a very short head. Ditkot. Ditkot are the winners. Yes. Oh. Ooh, you are a popular figure, aren't you? We've heard all this before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ditkot, three points to Ditkot. Ditkot, three points. And two points to Henley on Thames. <laughs> Henley, it's our Henley. Two points, and there's a score. Henley five, did get five, Rushmore one, Ed with you. Debbie, the second round with the hooter, the red and white hooter to match. Off you go. And it's Henley who is taking the ball. And uh, looking rather promising, and Dick. Cut on the right, the pushes. That sounds like one. Yes, so the locals are not forgotten. Richard Sweetman, a baker, Mike Newby, a tire fitter, Ian Gold, Judge, assistant manager of the sports center, and John Jones, a student in biology. Those are the kickers, the runners, call them what you want for this cut. Pete Duffy, Trevor Davies, Wally Pryor, and Theresa Knox. And that's the cast. And the hometown team, Henley Dribbling. And that sounds like another. It's all cup tie fever here today. Marvellous crowd. Tremendous enthusiasm. There's the girl and the goalie. The first score was three, so Henley chasing the three, to two rounder, three games, and then we have a rest while ever up down or what have you, and then into the second right, jolly big boot, and another one, did he come back, ah, oh, no, this is, uh, Moment of decision, just uh, before you tell me, Mr. Swan, did you count the last one? No, the last one was out of time. Ah, oh, ah, oh, well, that's that. All right. Oh, <laughs> well, you're a very good judge, so how many? Henley scored four. Henley, you found a lot of cheering, but only four. Four, so it's very close. Three, four, one still to go. You'll be joining us. Meanwhile, with Stuart. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. With me, I've got Miss Jane Curtis, a physical education teacher from Henley on Thames, and she describes herself as very lovely. <laughs> very, very lovely. That's a, a Yorkshire accent, if I've ever heard. I thought they all talked very posh in Henley on Thames. Yes, well, I'm from Yorkshire, but 
and teach them down here. Well, the very best of luck on your ladder game. Rejoin your colleagues, two boys and two girls. And over there, two equally lovely boys and equally lovely girls from Rushmore. With the ladder, they go under the hurdles with it, up the course, in and out the slaloms where they spear each other like that. Then they've got to put it on top of the ramp here. And on the other side, you'll see a big pole. They erect the ladder themselves, they climb to the top, put the ball on the top, and that's the end of the game. It's a race once again to the death. And before me, I see a big cheer here, the Henley Joker. Here we are. And just to calm your nerves, who is playing it? What is your name, young sir? Jamie. Jamie what? Jimmy Young. Jimmy Young? Oh, wonderful. And how old are you, Jimmy? Five. Five? I've got a big voice, you have and all. Well, thank you very much, Miss Piggy. Meanwhile, back at Kermit, he's going to start. Ready? Three, two, one. It's a smashing game. This, you like it. It's clever. Henley off the marks, off the blocks. And they pick up the ladder, they come through the solemn pose. Playing the Joker, six points here at stake. In and out they go. Stealing each other almost. Henley on ten. <laughs> Against Rushmore. And if you're wondering who Rushmore are, let me tell you. It's a combination of Pandra and Oldershot. One of those great big boroughs again. But meanwhile, watch Henley. They're tackling this with all the precision of a commando operation. The ladder goes on the front of the ramp. They climb up to the back. Rushmore are coming up on the ropes. Not very far behind. Any slip by Henley and the Joker's in jeopardy. Climbing across the two boys, but Chris Long and Richard. Then will go Glynis and Jane. Henley are across. Rushmore haven't quite got it together. Let's have a cheer for Henley, come on. And a nice big one for Rushmore. Where are the Rushmore supporters, but Henley are coming in. Henley are gonna finish the game, this is it. The two boys and a girl make the ladder. They hold it steady while up goes Linus. Linus goes up to the top, puts the ball on the top of it, that's the game. In the meanwhile, Rushmore. They've got to get the ladder down, almost in the crowd. They bring it forward. And we go to the top. Let us have a scamper, scamper to the top with the ball. Up she goes, drops the ball. Nerves are taking a hold. She's doing this on her own. There's nothing in it for her apart from glory in a big chair at the end. And that's it. <laughs> Arthur steps up. Well, we let that run just to see how long it would take. They took them 30 sec 35 seconds longer than Henley. Henley with the winners, obviously. You have a professorial mind. Uh, three points to Henley. They played the Joker, doubly up to six. Six points to Henley. Six points to Henley on ten. Two points. Two points to Rushmore. <laughs> Two points to Rushmore. There's the scoreboard, loud and clear for you. Over to Eddie. Well, thank you, Stuart. And the last marathon before half time, a three, a four, and what's to come? Rushmore against Enley on that hooter. Right. Rushmore, Nick, who's a student, plays rugby. And I win gold, Teddy Murphy and Alec Reed. So you've got the cast. Enley boys, the pushers. And the, the goalkeeper there is Sean Jones, student in biology, got a big boots on. I think she... Rushmore making the attack. He's running. He can't really see the position of the goalkeeper, but it's front of the net. There it is, and what a good save. Using the big piece, very serious about it all. But then these points are very important. Six points for the winner, points for the second, and two for Robert. The second half still to come. This is the end of the first half, and he took them over himself. 
He's going to catch him coming back. That's the trouble, a bit of spin on it, and he gets it coming back. Steady boy, though, the shooters are not informed today. I'll have a word with one or two football managers about this lot. And there it goes, the whistle for uh, half time. And uh, disappointment and joy, as the case may be. Now, the score, please. Rushmore scored two. Rushmore, you can tell who they for us. Two, so there it is. Three, Henley four. Rushmore, two. So that's it for the time being, but back to Stuart. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. And uh, there is the River Thames. Looking at its most beautiful, with the weeping willows drooping down into the water. Quite a bit of a tide on, but every ha everybody happy and smiling, including Dave and Melvin here on this little ramp with me, and they are from Didcot. And on the whistle, yes! You will cheer in a minute when I tell you something vital. On the whistle, each boy gets down onto a wire hawser, they hold hands across it, and as they move down the course, the wires get further and further apart. And as they go, they have to burst the balloon one at a time. It's a game for strong men. Good luck, you fellas. And as we jump down, we see that Didcot believe in Dave and Melvin. Here is the Didcot Joker. Played by a very Juno-esque young lady. Don't shield your face. Let mum and dad see it. Who are you, my love? Bernadine. Bernadine. How old? 20. Yes. And, and what is this, uh, why are you wearing Lincoln green and fishnet tights in those beautiful legs? I'm wearing the outfit because mainly it's to go with our team colours and also the stag is the coat of arms. The stag is the coat of arms and a very bonny player of the Joker indeed. Thank you. Equally bonny over here, the Afro-Cuban hairstyle, is Arthur Ellis. Good luck, lads. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Where are the Ditka cheers? It's two. It's against the clock. The first four are relatively easy for boys like this big, strong lads. The Didcot Joker, it's a very tricky game to play it on for these two boys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and the time. Dave Hall. A Hornets contractor of Didcot. And Melvin Evans, a quantity surveyor. <laughs> Once off the hawser, they have to go back to the start. And as they progress, you can see how many... They have burst nine, Arthur says, in those lovely stentorian tones, straight from the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. Nine. They've missed the tenth. But a 12 to go out, yes, 10. Now that could be crucial. We've seen the other two teams because it's a game in three heats and the maximum's been nine that anybody's achieved. Can they get the last one? Give them a cheer as they go. Can they get the last? Henry Bulls, get got cheers. <laughs> they could open the competition. How much longer to go? The Fallen Heroes, what a performance. Tell me, how many did you expect to get? Three. 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 Three, says I ask you. Right. How many did they get? Yes, well, Didcot scored ten. That one didn't count because they didn't burst it. Didcot, ten. <laughs> well, that's how beautiful uh, Henley on Thames is. Not just the trees, but the damsel with the grandstand view, and they're the people who've actually paid to see, are coming in over the Henley on Thames cheerleaders, and in fact, Henley on Thames are going now. What can they do? Are they ready? Three, two, one. They're 10 to beat. In a time of one minute 30, they had 10. Two. Two down. 10 to go. The cheerleaders are going slightly botty. But what a lovely shot of the Thames. With the current flowing about two knots. And the game. And they beat ten. You can see now the lads are stretching in. Because those wires go further and further and further apart the nearer you get to the finish of the game. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth one. The ninth one. They've got it. I want to cheer. A ten would equal Didcot and... They've equaled Didcot. The 11th now would put them in the lead and reduce the Didcot Joker to four points. This is vital. They've done it. They've done it. They fall off. They come forward now as fast as they possibly can. The whistle goes, but one performance. Give them the cheers. They were wonderful. Well, Arthur, that really was a turn up for the book. Good performance. The score for Andy. Excellent. 11. 11. And as the boats go by, you have another grandstand view just to illustrate how full the arena is this afternoon and a lovely day and rush more to go in the yellow. Ready? Three, two, one. Well, the only sound at the moment coming from the Rushmore cheerleaders at the back of the game. Shortly to heave into view. Two boys from Rushmore. Graham Bobbin and Alan Leeper. Well, the progress is steady. But they may lack the height of Henley on Thames. Those two big boys from Henley, Malcolm and Richard really did make mincemeat of our course. But one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh coming up for Rushmore. And as I say, it'll get tougher for these two boys because they're about five foot ten apiece. Four to go. Four to go, and they've got to stay on. To gain the points, they have to stay together, and you can see what's happening, the tension. They've dropped it, and that's, that's a bitter blow for them. You can see on their faces etched the tension. Well, that's the back of one of them anyway, because I assure you the other side of that is full of tension. They've done very well, though. How many, Arthur, do you say? Nine, this is ten. This is ten. If they burst another one, it, it again nullifies. They did Kachoka, they won't do it. But give them some applause for two lads who weren't particularly big. They weren't the biggest guys you've ever seen, were they, Arthur? They did it. It was a stormy performance by Rushmore, yes. yes. The score, Enley 11, Didcot 10, Rushmore 10. And the points, yes. three points to Enley. Three points to Henley. Two points to Ditkut. Two points to Ditkut. And... No, they play the Joker. Four points. Double it up to four. Four I points. I by the George and your left there. Ha <laughs> ha. Four points to Ditkut. Helena. And Rushmore, two points. And Rushmore, two points. That's the state of the pole. And now we come to the motorbike game. Three teams are going and we set off and we go through the slalom poles like that. And up the ramp, and, do, and don't forget to put the brakes on because it's just fresh air if you don't, round the other side. Round as back as fast as you can. There is another element to it, by the way. And, and you're all hoping I'm going to fall off, aren't you? <laughs> I knew you would. So then we come back to the start, and let me tell you the actual game. It involves three teams, the boys on bikes, they dribble the football exactly as I've done, and we count the number of goals scored through those hoops. Arthur, let us have the whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> And off we go, Henley, here is the crowd, Rushmore in the middle, and they slow down. <laughs> Didcot have decided they're going to do it the cute way, but Arthur's after him. Arthur's got him because you're, you've got to dribble the ball, you cannot hold it between your legs. There's the scene. That's Rushmore stuck in the middle, yellow, coming up in the stripes. Didcot on the far side in the red Henry. And the crowd are going potty. The whole crowd especially. But Henry aren't doing too well on this game. We'll get the score in a minute here. And Didcot about to score. And Rushmore too. That's Didcot one, yes? 
straight through. Here come Henley on the other side, near the crowd. Scampering along there is the real spot. Oh! You can hear the groan as the ball disappears. Let me tell you something about the guys who are doing the game. Or Didcot there. Look at his style in the stripes. Didcot mustachioed there. A romantic Lothario gives it a wallop. And he's an ace. He's Barry King, a building contractor, but he also is a scrambler. This is Rushmore, John, Stephen Kelly. Stephen from Rushmore, another whack and it's through. Where's Henley? Henley are lost at the moment. Near the crowd, in the crowd. Up and down, did cut to the aces on this game. But here's Henley, let's see if he can do it. Yes! It's a goal. But did get a bombing of it. A wonderful style there for Didcot. He's worth watching. That's that's Rushmore. That's Stephen. He's a squash player, but uh, on the left-hand side. That's the man. Watch him. He's an absolute ace. A wonderful scramble. Look at the thighs on him. The wrist as well. But as he said, as I say that, he makes a mess of the thing. But he can certainly ride about. <laughs> said he dismounting. <laughs> One of those moments when you wish you'd shut up. It's in Henley are coming up on the right. It's going to go in, it is. For Henley, it's John Thatcher. It was rather exciting, though, wasn't yes, it? Very well. yes. And uh, the final score. Yes, Didcot scored five goals. I thought they would. Rushmore scored three goals. Yes. And Henley scored three goals. And the points... <laughs> Lift one. Right. Three points to Ditka. You heard it. Three to Ditka. Two points to Rushmore. Two to Rushmore. And two points to Henley. And two to Henley. <laughs> That's the scoreboard. Henley 16. Ditka 12. Rushmore 7. But Rushmore still to play the Joker. And on to our next game. Well, here we are on the trampoline game. But the man who's going to play on it and perform this after, give me a nice welcome, is John Coe of Rushmore. Come on, John. Up you go. Right. Well, what he's got to do, above his head you see a large basket and the two teams here, we've got Henley in, <coughs> in the red and Didcot in the stripes. They've got to plaster it with balls that are going into the net and he hopes to stop them. The lowest score wins. Let's see how John will do in the costume as Arthur starts the game. Ready? Three, two, one. <coughs> the lowest score counts. So, two expert throwers, there's one of them. You'll see a lot of good throwing this afternoon from Leslie Hansel at Ditkins. Well, that's John. In the costume, he's conceded two. Conceded two, and... Where are we now? Yes. Let's look at that. Oh, that's a lovely face. And she's an ace. You caught it just in time. That is Leslie Hansel of Didcot. And she's an absolute bomber. She picks her time. She throws over the top. Straight. Oh, no. He nudged it out. There she goes again. Leslie. Bang. Straight in. And poor old John Coe on the trampoline wishes he could just grow about a foot. He's a bit on the tiny side for the game because going for Henley is the most enormous man. But let's have a look at the Henley thrower because he's quite well known as well. He is, and we'll see him because he's got a fair number of goals. A big lad, six foot one, on the furthest. There he is, he is Kevin Green of Henley. And anybody from Henley gets a big cheer this afternoon, but watch him, there he goes, did he go in? Yes. But the point is, did Kevin's throw count? Yes. And uh, the score that Rushmore allowed in was 17. That's not bad score for John Coe. 17 for Rushmore. Leslie, come over here. Because here is, this is, this is the spirit of knockout. Here she comes, a lovely little smiling face. Why are you so clever at this uh, basketball game? Uh, I play netball for the county. For the county? Which county is that? Oxfordshire. An Oxfordshire county player by George. And a smiling face and beautiful with it to your podium because we are about to recommence. Well, there on the trampoline is Master George from Henley. Everybody? 
Hello, Ian. What a welcome from 10,000 voices. Well, you know what you've got to do on Arthur's Whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> it was 17. 17 conceded. And, of course, Henley won't throw against their own man. It's Rushmore and Difficult. Rushmore and Ditka throwing. They may miss the ace throwing there, Kevin Green. But we can tell you something about the Rushmore thrower. There he is. That is Alec. And he's just as good. Big Alec. Six foot two at the far end. That's him. He's at Farnborough Tech, where he captains the basketball team. So he should be a pretty ace. Let's see if he scores with this one. Oh, a save! A great save there! by Master George. The fox is going on. Yes! Now you see how important it is to be tall. Because Ian's over six foot. And he, oh! He's getting a cheer automatically now. A groan when one goes in, please. A groan when it goes in. Now listen. Listen for it. What's going to happen? Leslie. Leslie Hansel, she's terrific. Watch this. It's... Yes! Ten seconds ago, and how's he shaping up? I'm going to get the news from Arthur Ellis. Oh, great save! Well, let's see. Arthur. It was 17 for Rushmore, the lowest score counts, by the way. So, what did Henley do? Henley. You could... Shh, you can hear a pin drop. 13. 13 for Henley! <laughs> and the crowd in a foment. It's Didcot to go, but Henley are barracking as well. Yes? And Barry's going. Listen to the excitement. A whistle. Ready? Three, two, one. Ah. That was 13. 13. 13 and 17. From the back. Barry Metcalf. Teacher of physical education on the trampoline, too. Cheers as they go in and groans from Henley. Listen. Ooh. Ah, ooh. Well, who is groaning the most and who is cheer? That's a Didka cheer. Give me a Henley groan. <laughs> Some wild throwing. Wild throwing at the moment. Oh, throwing. Alec is still throwing. Yes! Alec is still bombing them in for Rushmore. Nearly. Eight. Eight in how long, Arthur? Eight in a minute. And it's a one minute 30 game. Nine, nine. That's right. Nine. 25 seconds to go. 25 seconds, you're under the clock. He's up with the clock, Barry. This is Didka playing, by the way. Don't be put off by the red, thinking it's heavy. It's Didka there. Eleven. Eleven, you have five seconds to survive, to win. Twelve. Twelve, and, and you're going to win it if you're not going to win it. Well, come down, Barry. Barry, come down. Let me get this, this weight off your mind and your chest, because I think, just to show you the size of him, I'm six foot five, so... How did he go? How did he... Do well, you think you won? Oh, I don't know. Three lovely clue. All right, well, we'll put you out of your misery. Don't run away. Yes. Because you yes. might rejoice. Yes, Didcot scored... Uh, at, conceded 12. Because he's 12, you can rejoice! You won it! So, Didcot are the winners. In second place, Henley, and in third place, Rushmore. And the point... Yes! Three points to Didcot. Three points to Didcot. Two points to Enley. Two points to Enley. And one point to Rushmore. <laughs> one point to Rushmore. There we are warming up into a competition. Henley in the lead, 18. Didcot 15, Rushmore 8, and once again, Eddie, with you. Well, back to our soccer scene. Didcot against Henley. Very close, a three, a four, and a two. With that, Hooter will start them up. And this is very important. Very important for both teams. And it's Henley in goal. 
and throw in the punch bag. And Henley has got a couple of brothers. Richard Thatcher is one of them. And John Thatcher is the other one. So I don't think there'll be uh, any relation to uh, Margaret, but you never know. Very important, the goals. Oh, hard luck. Dick Cook. I've got Barry King. Trevor Davis and Wally Pryor. So this is what it's all about. The last time you're going to see the kickers and well done. Henley pushing the bag, trying to knock them up. The podium. Oh, they've got a nice style of dribbling. Dribbling it on top of the football. Ah, oh, two points when the goal was almost unmanned. Oh dear, is it the upright? It's all go, and it's getting close to time. Need some points. Ah, it's gone. No good me guessing how many, but uh, well, uh, very good, wasn't it? Behind there. Oh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I was just fell into it. How many? <clears throat> Didcot scored four, making a total of seven. Didcot. Four, making a total of seven. The next round with Stewart. Well, yes, there are the boys in the trees behind us with the grandstand view again. The ground is absolutely full. Rushmore are playing Ditkett, and it's a very simple game. It's a game of hoopla. But first of all, before you can hoopla, you've got to unhoopla. All the tyres have got to come off. These two big boys here, John and Alec of Rushmore, are playing against the two big boys of Ditkett. And I see a joker at long last. In comes the Rushmore Joker, just in time. Here it is, with cheer, and it's being played by this young gentleman here. And I must ask you, they all want to grab the bike, but what is your name? I fell off my bike, I did. You fell off your bike? <laughs> fell off his bike? Where was that? <laughs> off Mummy's Drive. Oh, off Mummy's Drive. And what have you done? Oh, he's got a bump on it. He's got a bump on his head the size of an egg. Are you playing the joke? What a brave lad. Give him a little applause, Ed. Come on. Anyway, the best of luck to you. And I hope you grow up into be a big knockout competitor yourself. Meanwhile, here we go. Let's see what Rushmore can do on the joke with Arthur. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> they, as I say, off they come from the pole. And then they can start to reassemble. And I don't think it's going to take Rushmore very long. The Joker may come too late to save them. If they get six points, it makes them 14. But Henley, at the moment, in the lead with 18. A couple of big lads. Let's have a look at them. Didcot are still struggling, so I think we'll have a look at Rushmore. Those two big fellas. John Harrop and Alec Reed. By now, you'll know Alec. He's on the right-hand side, not throwing. That's John, who's an artist, by the way. Very clever artist and successful, too. You don't, funny, you don't expect artists to look like that. Six foot two and 15 stone. <laughs> but this is Alec, who's only 18, I told you, at Farnborough Tech. Exp expert basketball thrower, but he's having trouble now. They've got two on. On the other side, you can see for yourself anyway how many did could have got. They've three. This is relatively simple for them now. The Rushmore Joker looking safe. Could be six points in the bag and open up the entire competition. That's the last one, Rushmore done it. That's the Joker safe and sound. And Rushmore completed it in 1 minute 15 seconds, which is half time allowed for the game. Three points to Rushmore, they play the Joker, doubled it up to six. Six points to Rushmore. Six points to Rushmore, as expected. And two points to Ditka. Two points to Ditka. Well, there's the state of the poll. You can see it for yourself. Henley have got 18. Ditka 17. Rushmore 14. And once again, Eddie. Well, this is a very vital one for Henley because they've got four, but they're going for the last time against the Southern Dickcott. Are we ready? You are. Can you blow that? They got that one all right. Away. There'll be a lot of cheers for Henley if they score because they're uh, just one point in front on the master scoreboard against Dickcott's 17. So they're in required to do a real stint. Two down. Two goals scored. 
No up and under in this game. Ah, oh, it is an upright. But the Dick Cobb defenders are doing a good job. And it's into the corner. And that's it. They're both in there with a good save indeed. Dick Cobb pushing well and defending well, but he's off. There's no early bath here. The Red of Kent. Henley. Got this uh, rather tricky technique, as you can see there. Jumping, pushing the ball on the top of it rather than running. He can't kick at that one. But time running out for Henley. Well saved. The goalkeeper for this one. Whoa, what a goalkeeper. He clobbered that one. Well saved. Vital points now in this marathon. Or the Phil Rouge, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, hello, the avalanche is coming. Well, that was, uh, that was quite something, wasn't it? They were really uh, belting in. And in their uh, effort to please one another, running all over the shop. Which, by which time you've arrived and you're going to give me the score. That's right. Henley scored seven, making their, making their total 11. Would you like to say that again? Yes, Henley scored seven, making a total of 11. Well, it's there. Very good. That's right. That's it. Seven, 11, but don't forget, still rush more to go. Back to Stuart. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. Once again, a notable knockout first. For the first time ever, we are going to play a game in the crystal clear waters of the Thames. And it concerns three teams going, four boys and two girls of each team. They have to run on the rafts which are moored in the Thames there with the current flowing fast and jump on the big inflatable raft out there, 50 yards in the middle of the river. Let me come over now. Well, nearly 50. Come to <laughs> Arthur Ellis, who will start the game. Ready? Three, two, one. <whistles> the boys are leading off. <laughs> and for your delectation, I may tell you that we are playing in a warm part of the Thames. Uh, this is uh, fed by the Gulf Stream, and the water's about 80 Fahrenheit. Henley have got one on, they've got two on, Henley have got two! Oh! They, well, they crept in. They crept in, Henley have got two on, Rushmore almost won. <laughs> and if you watch the faces of the competitors, you'll see just how warm the waters are. Th that's the game, Rushmore about to go in on the far side. Getting one in here, he's scrambling in for one, Rushmore nearest the camera. Henley are getting three on. And, and what about Didcot? Didcot so far, nothing. A lot at stake here. Henley four on, only two to go. Rushmore got one, Didcot nothing so far. And struggling along for Henley. A young lady, well, she's just, just as I say that, she submerged herself. Oh. And that in the middle, that's a, that's a young lady with the, blue, with the blue shorts. From Henley, and she's going to make it. She's going to struggle in for Henley. That's Glynis. Glynis is coming in again. Yes, she's on. That's five for Henley, three for Rushmore. And all around me, excited voices, girls and boys, all shouting on the favourite team. Rushmore crawling it. Didka haven't got one on yet. Yes, they have. It's five for Henley. Five for Henley, four for Rushmore, one for Didcot. And it's very slow progress. <laughs> in the water there. That is Jane, can you see her? In the middle lane, Jane struggling along. You've met her before, described herself as very lovely. The Yorkshire girl playing for Henley, but she needs, she needs to go faster than that. We need to jump. Everybody's crawling along instead of jumping. She's off, so Henley have got to wait for Jane to come back. There are six in each team. In the meanwhile, Rushmore. Rushmore, one, two, three, four, five. He's on, is he in? He's... <laughs> Incidentally, Didkut have crept in for three. Let it go, have a bomb, as fast as you can, go on. Oh! Jane. Have a go at it. Take a run at it. Go on, quickly. Have a practice while Arthur makes up his mind. In the meanwhile, Arthur, well, shall we advance? 
and be recognised. Yes. The crowd in the arena want to know how the favourite teams have got on. Rushmore got five persons under the ring. Five for Rushmore. Henley got five. Henley five, two. Didcot got three. And Didcot three. And the points. Yes. Three points to Rushmore. Three to Rushmore. Three to Henley. Three to Henley. One point to Didcot. And one point to Didcot. That's the score. All the jokers played. Henley on gems, 21. Didcot 18. Rushmore 17 for the last marathon. Eddie, it's with you. Well, the last marathon coming up on the hooter. Well, there it goes. And it's between Rushmore and the Didcot. And at the moment, Henley in the lead with 11. Rushmore have got two and Didcot seven. So what's it going to be? Rather important, the green and white against the yellows. And the Rushmore boys, Terry Murray, Irene Gould, Alan and Nick getting them all in. But it looks very much as if Henley's 11 is going to be, you can never tell. Rushmore, very much down with one more belt by Ginger. And uh, the big boots. Consolation prize, of course, but the, on the master scoreboard, it's Henley with 21, Rushmore 17, Dickcock 18, so you can never tell. One minute, 30 seconds, the total duration, and somebody's rolled over. And well saving at the other end. Doing a very good job. Waiting for it. Blazer, well, and there goes the final whistle for the marathon and the final score before we know it's going to the master scoreboard. Rushmore scored four, making a total of six. So there it is. Henley, 11, with six points. So over to the master scoreboard with six points for Henley. Four, four points for Ditcott. And two points for Rushmore. And the back to Stewart. Behind the net, you see 12 angry caged young men. Look at that. Ah. All grimacing, trying to get out. Well, they get out by scrambling over the net. They put a ball on the little cup just under the It's a Knockout side. They bounce down, catch the ball into the foam at the bottom of the inflatable and then into the container at the front of the game. Arthur, nothing can stop Henley but pride of Didcot and Rushmore is at stake. Yes. Ready? Three, two, one. It's a marvellous game. They come scrambling into the foam. Watch when they come out. <laughs> Didcot first, then Henley. Henley won. Didcot won. We've lost the ball. No, we haven't. Rushmore won. Oops. <laughs> well, nothing can stop Henley with 27, but I... I've no doubt that they will bomb this last game with every intention of putting a record score. The competition last week was keen, even. Give us a cheer for Henley, then you've gone quiet. Cheer for Dickens. And what about Rushmore? Oh. Henley coming down. What have we got? We have five for Didcot, four for Rushmore, four for Henley. Didcot in the lead. That's the scene. The last game. That's Didcot coming on the inflatable into the foam, out of the foam, roly poly into container, ball place. Didcot in the lead. Two, four, seven. Two, four, six for Henley. Six for Rushmore. Coming up for the seventh, finding them on. Henley cruising at the moment, not killing themselves. 
Come on, Henley. Go for the record points. Go on. Goldie's up now. On cue, Henley comes. Two, four, six, eight. But two, four, six, eight, ten for Didcot. Another one for Henley, covered in foam there, lost the ball. It's in there somewhere for Rushmore. He's looking there at the bottom. That poor fellow from Rushmore, he's looking for his ball, he lost it. No, he found it. <laughs> the game that every boy and girl watching Not Out would love to play. The Henley cheerleaders going potty in the background. All happening here on the riverside at Henley on a golden afternoon. Into the foul. Oh, he missed it. It's a fairly fighting them on. Arthur stepping forward to count. Mike Swan doing some counting. Maria Scott as well. Sean with the whistle. Yes. <laughs> and the whistle goes. <laughs> we all move into the debris. <laughs> Well, Didkit have given everything. They've given the lot, haven't you? Come here, let, let everybody see you. Have you enjoyed the afternoon? You haven't won anything, but have you enjoyed the afternoon? It's great. It was great, isn't it? Eh? Wonderful. And well played. A great competition, but who's won it? Let's go down the foam and find out. Have you, uh... Yes. You mean... And, uh, you, can, you come to your conclusion. That's it. The final score. Didkit 17. Henley 14. Rushmore 12, and the points. Yes. Three points to Ditcott. Three points to Ditcott. Two points to Henley. Two points to Henley on tens. One point to Rushmore. One point to Rushmore. There is the final scoreboard. A glorious sight for Henley, 29. Ditcott, 25. Rushmore, 20. Henley on tens, the winners. And Eddie at the scoreboard. Well, I... Hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Helen Hunt. And let me introduce the mayor, the winning mayor. Well done, sir. Councillor Robin Batchel Smith. And a special memento for you to remember the day. Well, thank you very much indeed, Eddie. It's been a jolly, jolly good afternoon. Everybody's had fun. Thank you. Thank you for taking part. And uh, what have you got to tell us now? Well, thank you very much, Eddie. I'll just put up here the name at the town, Henley on Thames, and go from the top as we normally do. Aaron will play in Ascona in Switzerland. Henley on Thames will go to a beautiful town in the south of France called saint Gaudens. And now, over here. Edward, are you with me? It's a championship. Knockout comes from Arena North, Charlotte Richard, and will feature Henley, of course. But next week, from Great Yarmouth, we present another winner, Great Yarmouth versus Norwich versus North Walsham. What a golden day, everybody uh, come in. Wonderful, Eddie. Hope you've enjoyed it from us all. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. from Henley on Thames. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. And there may be another chance to play the Joker next tonight on Gold.